very exciting. I just received the UPS notification that my ECM Synchronica espresso machine has arrived. I've been waiting weeks for this thing to be built. And so let's go inside and unbox that and see what this beautiful machine looks like. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. All right, here, wow. This is a lot larger than I expected. I mean, this is a big espresso machine. It's a double boiler, ECM Synchronica. You know, we'll talk about this a little bit later, later but uh, in kind of doing my research on espresso machines, everyone tells you uh, about kind of their stories of uh, constantly upgrading and upgrading and upgrading. So I thought that, you know, kind of pulling from a little bit of the philosophies I preach here at Kirby Allison, that as much as possible, I would try to invest in as nice of a machine as I could afford uh, to really future-proof myself. And wow, this thing is big. So let's get this inside. I'm gonna push it into the kitchen. Oh man, it's heavy too. But let's get this thing uh, into the kitchen. I'll show you where I'm gonna put it and um, we'll unbox this baby. So there we are. This thing, this baby is big. So we're going to see what it looks like once we get this thing unboxed. Um, this is a little kind of tabletop that I set up. You can see I've already got my uh, Eureka uh, grinder. This is the Axum 75. Uh, this is another example of where I decided to just go ahead and buy the insurance now. The first, um, the first grinder I got, which was a Eureka also, um, I forget which one it was, but it was much smaller and it was probably a $600 grinder. And again, uh, all the reading I've done has spoken about how in many ways the grinder is the most important component of your entire setup. So with that, I was still within the return policy, I think 30 days. Uh, and so I went ahead and bit the bullet and upgraded to this one. This has got the largest kind of burr um, that you can really find without going to kind of a fully professional coffee shop grinder uh, where you go from like a 75 millimeter grinder all the way up to maybe 95 millimeters. Uh, but this baby is, um, is beautiful. I've been using it already for the last couple of weeks uh, just to make my little uh, mocha pot espressos. Um, and this, it's fast, it's quiet, uh, and boy does it uh, produce a beautiful grind. Uh, but this is what we're here for. So let's clear this. I'm gonna you know, move this aside. And uh, my thinking is, is that um, this will be where I'll put the machine. Uh, I've got my coffee and some other things kind of in this drawer. I've placed a knife in here so I can open that. Uh, and so I think that it's gonna look beautiful right here. So let's unbox this baby and see what it looks like. Let's see what this looks like. Wow, beautiful. Look at that. One of the things that I liked about this machine, again, is the level of finishing. You can tell it's beautifully finished. Uh, it's almost a shame to not be able to see the back of this because it has a beautiful kind of ECM plaque. I love the chrome. Uh, you can get this with wooden colored panels, uh, but personally, I just think the chrome is beautiful. So there we are. Look at this baby. I mean, this is uh, basically chrome galore. Uh, as beautiful as the chrome is, I think uh, with children, and in a few months I'm gonna be regretting all this chrome as I polish this thing every day. But look at this. I mean, one of the things that I really was attracted to about this ECM Synchronica is just how beautiful it is. I mean, especially whenever you go into the high-end espresso machines, uh, they really have become works of art. I mean, the build quality is just as much uh, a part of what is important as the functionality of it. Uh, and this is an absolutely beautiful machine. Um, I looked at other espresso machines in the you know, $1,200 to $1,500 range. I mean, even uh, some a little bit less expensive. 
Uh, and the problem that you get into is that they don't have a dual boilers, which you really need because the water uh, that you're gonna boil for your steam uh, to steam your milk is going to be a different temperature uh, than the water that you're going to use uh, to actually extract your espresso. Uh, and so that just allows you to do two things at once. You know, while you're extracting your espresso, you can begin steaming the milk or immediately after. Whereas if you just have one boiler, you have to kind of change the setting so that the temperatures change. Uh, again, one of the other things that I really liked about this machine and all the reviews I read uh, was, again, the build quality. It has a stainless steel boilers. Uh, it, the build quality is just high. So that again, if you really invest in a high quality espresso machine, like something like this, uh, it should be, able, uh, should be something that you should be able to keep forever. I mean, you know, the basic technology behind espresso extraction, you know, really hasn't changed in the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, I mean, with the one addition of maybe the flow control, um, which allows you to kind of, uh, again, change the pressure that you're using to extract, extract uh, the espresso. But other than that, um, you know, nothing's really changed. It's got the PID, which again is what's going to allow us to, um, again, change the temperature of uh, the different boilers. And yeah, I mean, and it comes with kind of all the bells and whistles. I mean, it comes with the portafilter. It's got a single and double uh, espresso portafilter. It comes uh, with some cleaning stuff. It comes with the backwash. Uh, it comes with its own tamp that matches. That's beautiful. Uh, and it comes with really everything that you need uh, in order to um, plug and uh, really plumb this unit into your house if you really have that opportunity. Okay, so this is the water uh, reservoir. And we actually have a reverse osmosis system here at the house uh, that we really enjoy just to kind of remove all the impurities. But anyone that's into espresso knows just how important water is. It's really uh, one of the most important elements because espresso is like 95% water. Um, so we're gonna talk about water here in a second. Of course, uh, just a special thanks to the Texas Coffee School uh, based in Addison. Uh, Tom Vincent, who is uh, the proprietor, um, is really quite famous kind of in the coffee world. And so that's where I went for my two day barista training to kind of get me up to speed so that I even felt uh, capable of even operating a machine like this. I still think that I'm gonna need to um, you know, really kind of play around with it some more and read the manual and tinker a little bit before. I even think that we pull our first, um, uh, first espresso shot from this. I'm gonna need to kind of dial in the grinder and we'll probably film that for another video. Uh, but again, I just wanna make sure that I read the manual and fully understand everything before we get started. Uh, but a few things. One, water, exceptionally important. And so uh, I've actually got some drops here from GC Water, the perfect cup. And uh, this is uh, basically allows you to remineralize your water. The problem with um, reverse osmosis water is that there's no uh, dissolved solids in it and it'll actually over extract your coffee and can even lead to corrosion. Uh, so this is great. It allows you to take distilled water and basically remineralize it. And so it's one milliliter uh, per every gallon of water. I've got about, uh, about half a gallon in there. Uh, maybe a little less, so I'll measure that out one day to be precise, uh, but we're going to just go ahead and get that in uh, because I would prefer to be using reverse osmosis water or clean water from the beginning uh, to prevent any type of buildup or corrosion um, or to prevent any scaling, uh, I guess, so to say. Um, okay, let's shake that a little bit and then let's get, and this must be the uh, part of the solution with the um, kind of the dissolved solids because you can see it's already kind of starting to get on the glass. All right, so we're gonna put that in there. Quarter of mill a milliliter on each of these and we'll put this back. Okay, so this is to weigh my coffee out. Let's open the espresso scale. So here we are, this is the beautiful Synchronica. I've got the Eureka uh, Specialista 75 uh, and um, I've got my ASEA um, scale. I need to get um, some good espresso cups to go on the top. I need to get uh, some milk uh, steamers uh, for a cappuccino and for uh, lattes. Uh, and then I'm gonna go to the local uh, coffee shop and get some, some freshly ground beans uh, and I'll be back with you for that first extraction. So what am I wearing today? 
Um, so it's summer here in Texas, so I'm wearing a, a brown fresco jacket. This used to be a part of a suit, but unfortunately the pants uh, blew out uh, and wore through, so this is now just an odd jacket. Uh, this was made bespoke by Chris Despis, uh, really my first tailor, and gosh, a tailor that's like your first love. I mean, I respect the man so much and wish he was still able to make for me the way he used to. Uh, but it's got beautiful kind of patch pockets, uh, not just uh, down at the hips, but also at the breast. Uh, and this is a really kind of Italian influence of the way that that just kind of smiles. I'm wearing it, of course, with the Charvet shirt. This is a beautiful kind of light blue stripe, really thin shirt, again, perfect for summer. And then I've got it with a beautiful kind of uh, Kirby Allison sovereign grade tie. This is actually an ancient matter tie. It's one of my favorite ties. This is the dark navy. Uh, these trousers are cut high. This is a beautiful pair of linen trousers, brown, uh, cut for braces. I'm wearing it with a pair of Albert Thurston braces. These are silk. I've got a Kirby Allison uh, sovereign grade pocket square. Again, this is printed silk. Uh, and uh, what I like about this is that navy it really kind of brings out some of the colors in the tie, which is uh, really effectively what you want. Uh, and then I'm wearing uh, this with just a pair of brown sovereign grade socks and a really special pair of shoes. These are my George Cleverly Bespoke Russian Reindeer Shoes. It's a split-toed derby. What I like about this shoe, again, is the amount of kind of hand-sewn detail into it that just gives it so much kind of visual detail and interest there.